Well, we only had three days to mess this up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you call it messed up or not, but uh, uh, we, we decided to do it, decided that. We did it. But Gene was always doing something to me anyway. He was at our ministry church for about 10 years. I would spend my week determining what I was going to have for Sunday morning communion service. And nine out of 10 times, Gene would use that in his sermon before I ever got to use it. So, thank goodness so far he hadn't used any of my <laughs> yeah, the shock is that had I chose scripture to read, he had already read it. It would have been the fourth chapter. But it's good to see each of you here today. Uh, I wrote this down because if I hadn't written it down, I would start on one thing that would remind me of another and another and another. And uh, I wouldn't really know where I was at. I don't know where I'm at anyway. <laughs> but, uh, I don't want today to end. Uh, I love being with my sisters. I'm doing this today on behalf of my sister Bonnie, as I call her, my other sister. If I introduced Juanita, I'd say this is my sister Juanita and this is my other sister Bonnie. Uh, when I get a birthday card or something from Bonnie, it says, from your other sister. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also I want to uh, speak on behalf of Larry and Scott uh, today. And uh, I wish they wouldn't listen to these telephone people because <laughs> telephone people lie there. <laughs> they won't tell you the truth. What did you do? <laughs> Wait up, when I'm going in. <laughs> I can't say enough about Larry and Scott. Really, I can't. One of his two sons. Larry's been able to be here for about six weeks got been here about three weeks. And without them, Bonnie could not have kept on at home. Bonita would be very proud of them. And their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren. As I went over there each day, I was amazed at what Larry and the cop were doing. They were on the telephone, they were on their computers, uh, checking for different kind of medications, talking to the people about what they should do, when they should do it. Gave not only a, it was a, a 24 hour job each day. They were up and down all night long. They wanted to move or squirm or something. One of them was right there to attend to her needs. I can't say enough about Larry Scott. She was in the best of hands. God bless you, Scott. They both said that hospice was not only did their job professionally, but they also were comforting people. They went outside of their duties as caretakers that they also were concerned for those that were taking care of one either. And this is from Bonnie. Twelve years ago, two sisters, which happened to be my and Logan's sister, one either and Bonnie, <laughs> at the age of 79 and 76, Logan and I are younger than they are. <laughs> they both were widowed in the Year of 2001, Juanita, uh, Bonnie asked Juanita to come and live with her. They moved within two miles of where Logan and I lived. But they didn't let their age keep them from doing their thing. They had Halloween parties, birthday parties, never missed having a New Year's party. And a lot of you here today spent New Year's with them for the last 12 years. They attended 
she and Bonnie attended all of one of his grandchildren's wedding. Two of them were in Arizona. One of them was in Wisconsin. One was in South Carolina. And they even went to one great nephew's wedding, Shane McMillan, in North Carolina. <coughs> one either is the fourth of seven, seven, seven siblings of James and Anna May Carr to be with our Lord at this time. One either and Bonnie always did zigzagging puzzle. When you come in the door back there, if you see the one on the right, that's a picture of Juanita and her great-grandchildren that Mary took a picture of, had the puzzle made, and sent it back. The one on the... <laughs> the one on the left, as you come in, is the first puzzle that they did. And Helen, my wife, gave it to them, and that began their puzzle making. There was always a puzzle on the dining room table. So we ate, we ate on the card tables or wherever we could eat. So the dining room table was reserved for puzzles. They had at least 12 or 14 or 15 puzzles hanging in the garage and on the walls in the house where they completed them and fixed them in frames like these back here. We would have put them here, but Harlem won't let you put nails in the wall. <laughs> I couldn't do that. <laughs> I do work here. <laughs> I told you I don't wear my badge today. That way I'd be on the payroll. <laughs> I'd my badge on. <laughs> His wife takes care of me. <laughs> the closest person to a mother is a sister. And that's what one either was to me. I want to say thank you to my other sister, Bonnie, who went way beyond what her duty was to care for one either. <clears throat> she said that as long as she had breath in her body, she would keep one either at home. And that's what she did. One either was the oldest of four sisters. She set the example for the rest of us. If I had two sheets of paper and I wrote the bad things down on one and the good things down on the other, the bad sheet would be blank. That's the kind of person she was. This is what my granddaughter said about her Aunt Dee Dee. And most of you today knew her and called her Aunt Dee Dee. And Brittany said, You know you were so kind, so sweet, so caring, and so very loving to many people. Loved your smile and loved your life. This was how all her grandchildren also seen her and also spoke of her. Juanita made sure that all seven of us children were treated alike. Doug, my oldest brother, Juanita, Josephine, Bonnie, Lauren, myself, and Logan. Juanita helped mom in the kitchen and made sure that we all got the same number of biscuits, <laughs> same number of cookies. Of course, Logan always wanted the last biscuit. And he would, he would stick a fork in my hand and get it. We <laughs> 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 didn't last long. We don't need to take care of that. <laughs> I could go on. Most of you know her here today know what kind of person she was. We'll miss her. We'll miss our Sunday dinners together. We'll miss the birthday get-togethers. We'll miss Christmas time with her. 
We'll miss her and Jeff exchanging ding dongs. <laughs> Did you see the one in the casket? No, I didn't. <laughs> I'll have to tell you a story about the ding dongs. <laughs> we all went to South, went to Myrtle Beach one year together, and on the way back, we stopped to get some refreshments. And Brittany and Jeremy wanted two. Jeff said, no, you can only have one. Well, we want two. No, you can only have one. So Jeff picks up a thing of ding dong that's got two in it. Okay, for daddy to have two, kids know they go have one. <laughs> so we get back in the car and Jeff lays his ding dong up on the car. And we're driving down the road. We get a call on the cell phone and Jeff says, Dad, you know what? Do my ding dong? And I said, Well, Last time I seen him, he was on top of the car. <laughs> so he lost his ding dongs. I was kind of glad he did. <laughs> he was <in> there. <laughs> so that year at Christmas time, unknowing to one either and unknowing to Jeff, they both opened up a Christmas present and there was a box of ding dongs. <laughs> That's the ding dong. Now, Mr. Playing cards. I'm going to tell you just a couple of funny stories about Juanita and then uh, she had a closet in her house up in Wisconsin and Helen and I would go up there to visit and I'd ask Juanita where something was and she'd say, Jimmy, check in the end closet at the hall. I believe if I'd asked her where the car was parked, she'd say, check in the closet. <laughs> there's more stuff in one little closet and I've got it in my basement. <laughs> Told a joke up there one time and everybody laughed except one either. Next morning she got up to fix breakfast, she came down the upstairs and she was just down laughing. <laughs> we laughed about one either. She said, I just got the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you tell a joke and you don't get it. You're called one either. <laughs> My brother Doug, he had a store between where he lived and where she lived, and he'd come down on Sunday night, spend Sunday night with her. And uh, it, she got he got there one Sunday evening, one he wasn't home. So he looked on the door, and there was a note on the door that said, Doug, the key is under the mat. <laughs> 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 but she good joke when took all those good jokes and when she moved to Kentucky and she did have her automobile and she changed her Arizona tags to Kentucky tag and you know the Kentucky tags has the name of the county on the bottom of the license tag we, we live in the County of Scott and uh, Larry's wife, when they came in one time, she seen a license tag on one of his car and she said, well, See, Larry, I told you she's off more Scott. She didn't see that. She didn't see that. She didn't see that. She didn't Some people come into our lives and quickly go, and others stay a while and leave footprints on our heart. That can, we can never erase. One either. She was neat in dress and in appearance. She was always pretty. She was always appreciative of those who kept her, kept to keep her soul. So instead of mourning as we remember her this hour, we really should be celebrating the blooming of a flower. But forgive us, Lord, for pining and wishing she were here. It's hard to give up someone we have loved so dear. Because, you see, she was different. She was special in many ways. She was loving. She was giving. And we'll miss her all our day. There's a wonderful thing that gold cannot buy, a blessing that's rare and true, and that the gift of a wonderful friend like one of been to you. 
Although we've had her so many years, we'll miss her pretty face. Wonderful smile, and especially the touch of her hand. She will live in the heart of the family and friends, and will be known always for the foundation she laid. Because goodness and fairness never die. They go shining on like the sun in the sky. Just as honor and truth endure forever, death is power, power to destroy or to sever. To her gallant soul has taken flight into a land where there is no night. She is not dead, she's only gone on to a brighter, more wonderful, everlasting land. My brother Douglas told me when I went into the service, he said, Jimmy, I'll not say goodbye. I only say so long. They're not going to sing them in the song.